Hello, hello everyone. It's Sunday night and guess what that means? Yep, we're getting our craft on again. Hello, I see we have some people here already. <laughs> it's okay to watch and eat, Kelly. That's completely fine. <laughs> we have no problems with that. That's the good thing about the internet. You can be a little bit anonymous, can't you? You can sort of hide yourself. You don't have to be on camera, except me. I have to be on camera <laughs> and I've just finished my dinner, so... There we go. And I've left, I walked away and said to my family, right, it's up to you guys to clean up the table because I'm off to do my live. Hey, but I did all the cooking. So I think that's fair, don't you? I see we already have a, have a thumbs up. Thank you so much, whoever, whoever, whoever has posted that one. Oh, it's Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do that. Um, that helps me um, with my numbers and helps my channel grow so that um, I can keep providing these, um, these free videos every Friday and Sunday night. Although let me tell you a little secret. Um, there is a possibility. My husband has had um, a work change. He's still working for the same company, but he's had a bit of a sidestep kind of, a, kind of a promotion. Um, and he's not going to be doing night shift very much anymore. Now he is doing night shift next week because he's filling in for someone who's away, but, um, and he did night shift last week, but once everything settles down, he's going to be full-time day shift, which means that every second weekend before he was working all weekend and, and I kind of had the weekend free, but now he's going to be working Mondays to, uh, sorry, no, Tuesdays to Fridays. And that means that, um, I may not always be free on a Friday and a Sunday night. So I'm looking potentially not right now, not yet, but at some point, I may look at changing the times. Um, if you're a member of my VIP group, um, I'm probably going to poll over there to see what times suit people, what everyone um, what everyone enjoys, what is the best time. Um, if you're not part of my VIP group and you're in Australia, you can be part of the VIP group. Um, and that VIP group is, let me just pop the details up, it's called this. See what's on the screen right now? Linda Dolkey's Private Stampin' VIP group. So if you search that on Facebook, and you're in Australia, you will um, you will be added to the group. Okay, you've just got to answer a couple of questions. I think the first question is, are you in Australia? And the next question is, are you a customer or a team member, or would you like to be? Um, and even if even if you're not, that's still okay. As long as you're in Australia, you can join that group. So. Um, so that's what that's all about. And then for those who don't fit that criteria, you're not in Australia, there's a space for you to put your email address in so at least I can send you my newsletters. So there's that. Or you can, the other thing you can do is you can go to my blog, which is now on the screen, www.lhiggins.blogspot.com. And especially it's easier if you do this on a laptop or a computer. Um, when you log into that address, on the right-hand side at the top, is a little form to fill out to receive to be added to the new newsletter list, and also send you a a um, uh, some some tutorials, some information, some free tutorials, and some information about my top three favorite card making techniques. Okay, so when you join the newsletter, you get that. Um, that is pretty cool, and I'm still trying to work out how to send that out to. I'd like to send that same document with my my favorite card making techniques I'd like to send that out to all my subscribers I just have to work out how to do it <laughs> so once I get that sorted out I'll be sending that out to everyone okay let's get rid of that banner there we go um, okay so how's everyone's week have you all had a fantastic week anyone have anything new and wonderful happen to them this week how how some I'm after lots of good news that's what I'm after Ah, yes, you and Donna were in early. I saw that, Margaret. <laughs> oh, that's no good. You have a bleeding nose, Cherie. Ah. Well, yeah, sorting scraps um, is one of those jobs that I put off. I know I shouldn't. I have a couple of boxes of them right now. But um, with the colour refresh, it's not making me want to, well, we're assuming there's a colour refresh. We're pretty certain, 99% certain. Um, and that does make me less inclined to sort my colours because I know some of them might be going. So i am sort of put that one on the back burner at the moment. Oh, that's all right. Jean, you're allowed to fall asleep. And I'm really glad to hear that your recovery is going great. 
Um, do, 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 do. Who else have we got here? Hi, Christine. Nice to meet you. First time here. Everyone say hi, Christine. Hey, Christine. Christine Cutler. Where are you from, Christine? Where Are you um, here in Australia or are you somewhere else exciting? And who else we got? Louise, you're in the UK. Nice to see you. I know I'm missing a heap of people. I'm so, so sorry. I just can't mention everyone. But I would like to wish you all a happy new week. And I hope you've all had a great weekend. Okay. Anything? Have I missed any questions? Um, oh, Katrina had a question. Do you prefer us to watch you on YouTube? It actually doesn't matter. Okay. Um, you can watch in either because it's the same content in both. But um, I find... I'm trying to build my YouTube channel and um, Facebook is, is just a different way to engage. So it really doesn't matter. It's more about which is better for you, um, not so much as in what I prefer. I would just like you guys to access me via video in whatever way is easiest for you. So if YouTube is easier for you, then that's great. And if um, Facebook is easier, that's fine too. Um, I do notice that if sometimes people find me for the first time by watching one of my videos and that normally happens on youtube i ten tend to meet more new people there the people that i um video the people that i'm presenting to on facebook are usually people who've been watching me for a while so that's a little bit of a different thing <laughs> uh there we go Can you be under another demo? Sorry, I don't understand the question, Kelly. Um, did you ask the question in a different place? So the question is, can you be under another demo? And I don't know. I don't know what you mean. If you could maybe clarify that, that would be great because I'm sure I can answer your question. I just need to understand what it is you're actually asking. Um, Oh, Alison, sorry, Sunny, um, you were saying the UK is top of your bucket list. Guess what? I get to go there for the very first time in my whole life. Um, I'm going there in May and I'm a bit excited. Um, we've got the Stampin' Up! trip coming up and um, and that's very, very exciting. That's the So Stampin' Up! offers a trip to people who make a certain level of sales and a certain level, you know, like basically your business is working at a certain level. And I've been really, really lucky I have been a demonstrator for uh, seven, well, 16 years, 16 and a half, and in that time I've earned 15 trips. So I've been very, very fortunate. Now, that it's not just good fortune. It's not just luck. It's also hard work because I've put a lot of effort into making sure I earn those trips. I've missed one, um, and the one I missed, I only just missed it too. So I was devastated to miss out on that particular one. It would have been a good one. But, um, but I'm very, very grateful for the ones that I have been able to go to. And we're supposed to say a disclaimer whenever we talk about this sort of thing that, you know, these results are not typical and um, that, you know, that they're earned by less than 0.01% of demonstrators. But I don't like saying that because it sounds like I say, hey, look at me, look how important and fantastic I am. You know what? It is just good old-fashioned hard work um, and very, a lot of I'm very consistent I'm very, I'd say there are three things. If anyone ever wonders what you have to do to earn a trip, three things. First of all, you need to um, you need to have commitment. You need to be committed to the outcome that you want to achieve. You have to be very consistent and just keep on doing the stuff over and over and over again, even when you don't feel like it. And what's the last one? There's a third one. Three things, commitment, consistency, and I've gone blank. I don't remember what it was. I'll probably remember it in a little while. <laughs> but... Um, but it does, it's not that I'm special. Seriously, if I can do it, anyone can. I honestly believe that. But it does take, it, I'm not going to tell you it's not hard work because it is. <laughs> um, and Rose answered for me. Okay, good, 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 good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> because sometimes I miss questions. Um, all right, so I see you're all asking each other where you all are. That's all right. <laughs> Yeah, this is it's. We're having a bit of a heat wave here in Australia at the moment. For those of you who are elsewhere, um, and it hasn't been too bad here. Today was quite nice. It was lovely. We're in, doing Celsius today. Got to I think it was twenty eight or twenty nine degrees, which is actually a really nice summer's day. Um, but yesterday was up to about thirty four, and other areas of the country, like over where Jody is, is looking down the barrel of high thirties into close to forty. 
So, um, and in Victoria as well. So there are certainly some areas of Australia that are very hot right now. Okay, I think I'm, yes, I am going on the cruise, Louise. Yeah, so the cruise leaves from Southampton, right down the south end of um, the UK, which, like I said, I've never been to the UK before, so that's very exciting. We fly into Heathrow and then the Stampin' Up! flies down, uh, sorry, send us down probably by bus, I'm guessing, or some sort of um, transit vehicle down to Southampton and then the, the cruise leaves from Southampton. Um, it's a seven-night cruise of Norway, and I've always wanted to go to Scandinavia, so that's very exciting. I'm very excited to go. And then when we get back, I'm staying with my friend Amanda um, down near Southampton for a couple of days. I can't wait to see her and spend a bit of time with her. And then we're off to see other parts of the UK. And we have we have not planned where we're going. Got some ideas, but it's so difficult because there are so many places to go. <laughs> oh. All right. Hello, hello from the next suburb. Hi, Ellen. <laughs> we've got people from the next suburb and then we've got people on the other side of the world. So that's pretty amazing. Jody, I thought, yeah, you were pretty hot down there in Adelaide. All next week is 40 degrees. Ouch. I hope you have good air conditioning. I'm sorry to hear that that's going to be. Oh, so Louise, do you know Amanda? Because she's right near, she's about, um, she's between Portsmouth and Southampton. So Ferrum is where she is. So you might know her. <laughs> and 39, Leslie, that's too hot. Yeah. Yep. 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 Best you could do for bling. Yes, Donna G is talking about Jodie because she is the bling queen. Oh, you've been three times, Katrina. Oh, all right. I am going to keep going on the crafty stuff because I could sit and chat with you guys all night and you know we'd never get anywhere. Tonight I'm going to play with some colour and I'm going to use, we're going to do some technique tonight. So um, I've got a couple of weeks ago, um, I didn't actually re-watch the video but I saw that um, Sarah, who's our CEO, she, she runs the show over there in uh, Salt Lake City. Sarah did a, um, a background with, where is it, the hand drawn dots. And she did it on the, and she did a um I've heard this technique called several things, but the technique she was using was basically um it's an embossed resist technique and it's um, sometimes called emerging colour. So I want to recreate that look um and I have the same stamp set, but then I want to show you an alternative way to get a really similar look and then at the end we'll compare the two and see which you can tell me which one you like the best, okay, or which one you think you'd be the most likely to do. So let me get my camera into the right place here. And I've got my light on tonight, Ellen. You'll be happy to know. And let's switch over to the desk. All right, let me just get that a little straighter on the table. I hate crooked. Crooked and I are not friends. There we go, that's better. All right, so we've got our hand-drawn dots. And the first, um, I'm wondering whether I should do it the same as what Sarah did it the first time. And then the second time, I'm going to do a different technique. So we're going to start with one on white paper. And this is a rubber stamp. Okay. Um, when I'm using a big stamp like this, I am quite, um, quite often inclined to um to use the stamparatus because sometimes it can be really difficult to to get a really good impression with a great big stamp like this and stamparatus allows you to get a great impression by allowing you to re-stamp in exactly the same spot several times over but i'm actually going to use block f which is our biggest block and that's the one that is made for these big background stamps okay so the hand drawn dots if you're looking for it everything i'm using tonight is available for purchase um, you can either go to my online store, which is on my blog, and I'll put that address up again, and it'll also be in the description below. Or um, you can send me a message, and I'll help you, um, especially if you haven't ordered before and you're not quite sure how to go about it. So so there you go. Uh, now, what are you saying there, Sunny? Something about my Stamparatus. I hope that says you love, but it actually says, I think it's, it looks like it says you're over your Stamparatus. That means it's no good anymore, or do you mean you love it? <laughs> Oh, no, Denise, am I stealing your thunder? Oh, I hope not. Oh, Louise, you live in the same suburb as Amanda. So you must know her, surely, Amanda Fowler. You probably do. 
All right. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a similar technique to what Sarah used. And we're going to go with a couple of colours. We're going to go, I'm choosing a few colours that I really like to work with. I think daffodil, although I could go up to Mango Melody because that's a nice strong colour. And then I think Bermuda Bay. I'm going to go with these three colours, okay. And what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to prepare my surface. So I've got a card front size piece of basic white cardstock here. And I'm going to be stamping on this with clear ink and that's because we're going to emboss it okay so i'm going to grab my versamark so if this is not riveting um video because because being clear it means that it's actually really hard to see it but i'm going to ink this up you'll just have to trust me that i'm inking it up and i'm going to go over the whole thing because it's such a big stamp i find this is the easiest way to do it apply your your ink to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink works much better and i'm really going to give it a, like a second run over because i want to make sure i'm getting a good impression all right so like i said this is not going to be very exciting video now once again because this is such a big stamp here's a, these are a couple of tips that i hope will help you when you're using a big background stamps i do not put my stamp onto my paper instead i put my paper onto my stamp all right and so i'm going to make sure that it's covering the whole thing and then the other thing you might want to do is grab a piece of scrap paper it can be a bit of grid paper or a bit of whatever you like i'm going to pop that over the top and i'm going to run my hand all over that paper so it makes a good connection a good contact um and then I don't also, especially if it's a coloured ink, I don't get ink all over my fingers. With Versamark, it just means I get a little bit of a sticky fingers, but I, you wouldn't see anything because it's clear, right? All right, so now I don't know whether you can see this. Can you kind of see there's a bit of an impression there? A bit hard to see, but that's okay. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my embossing, uh, my embossing editions kit. And I love this kit. This has been a game changer. If you if you do a lot of embossing, it's great. It comes with a brush, which I don't have right now. Um, it has an embossing buddy, which I probably should have used before I started, but oh well, we'll do that on the next one. We've got a pair of reverse tweezers. I love these tweezers. They're so good. You squeeze them and they go apart. So that's why I'm calling them reverse tweezers. Very, very handy little things. Makes it easier to hold stuff. And then we've also got this great tray. All right, so I'm going to take the tray out and I'm going to move this for a second. Who else loves heat embossing? I'm a big fan of heat embossing. I just love it. It's one of my favourite things. And I've just realised what I've done. I've just done something really silly. Denise, when you're doing this tomorrow, don't do what I've just done. Because I've just done it back to front. So we're going to get a different result. We're going to get a different result to what I intended. Shall I do it again? Maybe I'll do, maybe we'll have time. Maybe I'll do three backgrounds. We'll see. All right. So this way, what I should have done was I should have added my color first and then gone over it. But what I'm going to do, I'm using clear. You could also use white because we are working on white paper. So we could do either way. I bet some of you were going, hmm, what's she doing? That, that's not right. And you would be correct. I've done it wrong. But that's okay. We're going to get a good, we're going to get a nice result anyway. I'm not going to waste this. All right. So now I've got my, I don't know if you can see it. You can see that the powder is sticking to that clear, that clear Versamark. Okay. So this is going to give me a different result than what I actually intended, but that's okay. I'm now going to undo the plug and I'm going to pop this back in and tap it. I've got a little brush that I use for this kind of thing and I'm just going to make sure that all my powder goes back into my little tub. There we go. All right. Lid back on. Ready for next time. And tub back on ready for next time 
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heat and my heat tool. So this time, this is, like I said, this is a different result to what I was expecting or what I intended, but that's okay. It's still going to be really cool. Okay. So I'm going to hold this down with my tweezers and I'm going to get my heat tool going and we're going to cook this powder. So basically what we're doing now is we're applying heat to the powder and it's going to cook it. It doesn't take very long, but the first one always takes longer than the others. Okay, it's starting to cook now because it's going shiny. takes a little while because it's a whole sheet but don't worry you can just talk amongst yourselves if you want to but I won't be long here so we're going to get three completely different results now well two are going to be similar and this is going to be an alternative And if you can see it's starting to go shiny can you see that it's hard to see in the light isn't it not very exciting at the moment i know i don't think cookie likes the sound of the heat tool because he's making a lot of noise right now he's complaining and i've got two cats under the desk So we've got a bird and two cats is what we've got right now. Okay, I hope you can see this. Can you see that I've got some shininess going on here? Oh, it's hard to see. Ah, you can see it there. All right, so you can see that the dots have gone shiny. This is embossed resist. <laughs> we are something more like the Joseph's coat technique, yes. All right, so what I'm going to do, we're still going to do embossed resist. Okay, um, and I'm just deciding which colours I want to use. I like the polish pink. I think I will stick with these ones. That's Bermuda Bay, and then we've also got we've also got some yellow there for our daffodil. All right, so I'm going to start at the top with my Bermuda Bay. So what we've done, we've we've embossed our dots okay and I'm starting here at one end and I'm just going to come down about a third of the way so basically I'm going to be I'm going to be putting one color into another and you can see that the dots resist the ink so they are going to stay with what because this was clear they're going to stay with whatever the base color was which in this case is white but if you started with a different color then your other color would be would be the the next one along okay so I'm now going to go into the yellow and we're going to go here and I'm just going to go right across I'm going to go a little bit over my Bermuda and then we're going to get our polished pink I can see that you guys are talking to Sunny let me see have I missed a question up there I know I never tire of watching heat embossing either Leslie isn't that isn't that true Gosh, you guys talk faster than I can scroll. <laughs> That's good, though. I love that you guys all chat and talk to each other as well as me. 
don't know about you guys, but I look forward to these videos very much. It's a lot of fun for me. All right, so this is coming together really nicely. You can see that the ink is resisting, okay? And I'm just thinking, do I have, what I need is some paper towel to wipe this off because at the end, some of the color sits on top of the dots and then that means that um, by wiping over them with a paper towel or a, a, a soft cloth um, or even a tissue, you get rid of any ink that's sitting on top and it, it cleans up beautifully. So, all right, so this is how it's looking, okay? What do you think? Do you like this? Is this nice? I'm just looking to see if I have any tissues close by. I don't think I do. That's okay. We can, we can come back to that. All right, so that's number one. That's how it's going to look. All right, so number two is going to be very similar, but we're going to start. I'm just going to cut another piece. So that's quite pretty on my table too. looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe I can do something with that. All right, so I'm going to do, so 10, 5, 14.3 is card front size here in Australia. So it's the same size as a regular card front. And I'm going to do the same, but this time, I'm going to do it before I emboss. Now, this is what I actually intended to do and then got myself distracted and didn't do it. So I am going to... Sometimes this is called emerging colour. Um, and as uh, was it Michelle that was saying, um, also called sometimes Joseph's um, Coat of Many Colours. There's a whole bunch of different names for this. All right, so... This time we're doing it, but we're going to emboss later. All right, I'm so sorry if I've missed questions, guys. That's the only problems with doing techniques is I get really involved in what I'm doing and um, then I miss your comments. So I'm really, really sorry about that. Oh, that's good, Monique. I'm glad to hear that you'll be able to join us live again. I just realized I think my Bermuda is a little bit dry so I am going to quickly re-ink it because I feel like it needs a bit more and if you haven't seen how to re-ink um, if you've never re-inked an, an ink pad this is your little instruction I like to do it this way I dot my ink on And then I get a spoon, or you can even use a bone folder. The only thing is if you use a bone folder, it will potentially stain your bone folder. But if that doesn't bother you, then not such a big deal. Let me see if I've got a spoon here. I usually keep a spoon at my desk. But, oh, here it is. I use my spoon with some stays on and <laughs> it stayed on, but that's okay. It won't, it won't hurt my ink pad. So I'm just going to massage the back of my spoon. I'm going to massage the ink down into the pad and now it's all ready to go. And it's, if you, you can always add more, there's never a problem with that, but I find just a few dots like that up and down my pad is usually all I need to get going again. And you'll see the difference straight away. So it's going to give us a much better, a much better result. Now this doesn't have to be perfect and you'll see why in a little while. You could also um, do this with brayering. Some of you may remember the old rubber brayers that we used to have or more recently the sponge brayers. They, would work, they work good for this technique as well. So I'm going my daffodil in the middle. I'm going to give a couple of couple of um, coats of each, couple of couple of goes at it. All 
All right. So this this one is just coloured and very roughly coloured. This one is embossed and then coloured. Okay. Can you see the difference straight away? That's how it looks before it's embossed. Now, because I'm going to be embossing and because I've just applied ink, I definitely want to make sure I use my embossing buddy because if I don't, there's bits of um, the ink that I've laid down with my brushes that are going to be still wet enough that the powder will stick to them and I don't want it to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my embossing buddy and I'm going to run this all over and that's going to get rid of any, any sticky patches um, uh, it'll get rid of any um, static electricity that might be, and even the the oil from my fingers, which is why one reason why it's a good idea to hold down with a, um, a pair of tweezers or something else, hold it down so that you don't get any oil from your fingers. All right, now I'm ready to go again. This time I'm going to grab my Versamark ink, same as before. I'm going to ink up the whole surface. Are you taking the cats? Yeah, I'm feeding them. Okay, thank you. That'd be great if you could close the door on the way out so they don't try and get back in. Thank you. How's the live? Live is going well, thank you, Ben. <laughs> he says hi. <laughs> All right, so we've given that a good old, a good old um, inking, and then I'm going to do the same as I did before, and I'm going to pop this down so that it makes contact with my rubber stamp, okay? And once again, I'm going to get a piece of paper. I'm going to pop that down over the top and I'm going to run my fingers over it so it makes good contact. <laughs> and you know what? Even though I need them again, um, actually I don't need them again after this, um, but I, I, I did close them, hey. All right, so I'm just going to pick that up very carefully by the corner. All right, now, I don't know if you can see. Can you see the can you see the inking on that? You can kind of see it. All right. So now guess what we do? We bring this back in and we're going to go through the process of putting our powder once again on. Now, what's important? Remember before I did I did clear, but I could have done white because the background's white anyway. In this case, to do this technique you absolutely must use clear okay so this is clear embossing powder and when we put it on it doesn't really I mean you'll see it stuck to because it's a it looks like it's white it looks like a white powder and you will see it I'm going to use the whole container and I'm going to pick it up very very carefully and I'm going to without getting my fingers on it more than necessary oh look there's a cat here of course there is and we're going to dump that off okay now you should be able to see that no problems it looks like it's white but trust me when I tell you it is not white it is it is clear All right now because we used that um, embossing buddy we don't have we shouldn't have stray powder everywhere but I think I still do have let me see I have this bit here where that cat hair was this is if you own cats or dogs or pets of any kind, um, this will be probably um, not unfamiliar to you that this happens sometimes. You get hairs sticking where they shouldn't. All right, that's better. Anyone else have that problem? All right, so I'm going to, before I start blowing my heat tool anywhere, I'm going to get this back into the tube, back into the tub. And it's all coming out that little plug. If you like to emboss, you can manage without one of these. You do not have to have one of these to emboss, okay? I would recommend that you have a, um, a heat tool. Um, back in the days, we've all probably, I know lots of people have gotten away with using the heat from a toaster. Um, and you can do that, but it's it's way inferior to having a heat tool. Heat tool just makes life so much easier. Goodness me. All right, it's back in there. The lid on. Put the plug back in. And now that I'm ready to do this, 
I'm going to grab my heat tool again, and this is where we get to talk in between, talk between ourselves again. Hi there, Margaret. Oh, no problems. Yeah, this tonight we're doing a bit of technique. Okay, welcome, welcome. I don't think we've, if you and I don't think have met. I'm not sure, but you you find hairs too, Chris. Yeah, I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> oh, true. Poodles don't have. Poodles are not hairy dogs. They've got lots of hair, but it doesn't come off. It's very good that way. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to create clear dots of embossing, of cooked embossing powder on our beautiful background. So this is the way that Sarah did it when she did hers. Now you should be able to start to see it's cooking. Can you see the dots almost look like they're disappearing? As they cook. Now this is kind of a forgiving technique because you don't have to you don't have to have it perfect underneath it's still going to give you the result that you want you'll be able to see it definitely cooking here on the blue and here we go i think i'm pretty much done i'm just going to give it a blast all over all right, so this one we had the white dots on the background. This one now we have clear dots. Can you see that? All right, and this is where I get to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to grab, I'm looking to see if I have a black, if I have a black um, blending brush. I don't know that I do. I thought I did. But maybe I don't. Maybe I have to. I have to christen one and make it black. All right. So I'm just going to get this one, and I'm going to grab some black ink. Memento will be good. Um, if we need to add more ink, we need to add more ink because we want this to be really, really black. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ink up my blending brush with my black ink. All right, and I'm going to start here at the end and I am going to go straight over the pink. So it's not going to be pink anymore. But guess what? The dots are. So we're going to end up with a black background with the colour of the dots. Can you see what we're doing here? Totally different, right? <laughs> So sometimes it's called emerging colour. Um, Michelle before was talking about it being like Joseph's, Joseph's coat colour, um, colourful coat, coat of colours. And the more ink you get, the more dramatic it's going to be because obviously that makes your background blacker. And can you see how now we've got on a black background, we've got our coloured dots. So this is another way to use your embossing to give you a completely different effect. Now I want to show you a third way of doing this to give us a really similar result. And I'm really trying to get it as black as I can to give it a really good result. I'm going to say that's done. You've never seen that done, Jody. <laughs> Very dramatic. Okay, so now we have the same. We started out with the same. We started out with the same, the same background, really. But this one, we did the dots first and then coloured over with our different colours. This one, we did the colours first, then the embossing, and then went over the top of the black to create the dots in those same colours. 
okay totally different <laughs> Yes, you can do ink pad direct paper. Your ink pad needs to be very, very inky to do it, and you can you can go over the top. That's another way to do it. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different ways. You can use a sponge. You can use a sponge dauber. Um, there's a number of ways. But I quite like. I really love the blending brushes. I'm a big fan of those. All right. So there we go. There's a couple of different ways. I am going to show you one last way to get this look, this dramatic look but with a different type so what i'm going to do this time is i'm going to get myself some black paper okay and this time i'm going to ink up my ink pad my sorry my stamp my hand-drawn dots the hand-drawn dots if you're wondering where they are they're in the mini catalog um, and it's a really fun set. I've really enjoyed working with it. It's part of the Desert Detail Suite, if I'm not mistaken. Let me have a very quick look. Let's have a look at that. I want to make sure I give you the right information. Move that for a second. Pretty sure that's that's correct. Uh, hmm. Maybe not. No, it isn't. Look, I made I made a mistake. It's not part of this suite, but I think it goes really well with this suite. Um, let's have a little look page it's on page 28 so it's back further so no it isn't part of the desert details I think because I got them at the same time I was thinking it was but you certainly can use it together because that, I think it would go really well but here they've used it on a little bag which is really cute and they've also got another background stamp here which is the layered stripes which is a lot of fun as well I saw this demonstrated at our on stage event and it was stunning what um, I think it was M M Michelle Jutresa, I think, who did that, and it was absolutely amazing what she did with it. She's very clever. One thing she did do with it, <laughs> I'm not going to do it right now because I've already got this inked up, but she took the, the stamp off the block and held it in her hands, rolled up, and then kind of rolled it onto her page to create a scrapbook layout background. Amazing. Never even had occurred to me to do that. All right, so we've inked this up. And we're going to put our stamp, our cardstock, our black cardstock over the top. I'm going to get my scrap paper. And I'm going to, goodness me, Cookie's no, no, um, I was going to say he's naughty tonight. He's not really naughty. He's just noisy. <laughs> he's not naughty. He's been very happy today, singing lots of songs, whistling, doing all the things. He doesn't always do that. But he, he used to do it all the time. As he's getting older, he's slowed down a little bit. All right, so this is here. I'm going to pull this off. And now I've got, can you see the design on my black? Okay. Now this time, instead of using clear, I'm going to use white. White and clear, believe it or not, are my two most used, two most used colors. I don't know if you call them colors really, but they're the two I use the most. I'm making sure just gotta get my way out. Just gotta find my white now. So the clear we've already used. They look identical. That is one of the things I wish they did because the white and the clear actually look exactly the same. <laughs> It's, um, it's really easy to get them mixed up. Does anyone have any questions for me? Oh, thank you, Leslie. That's very nice. Oh, thank you very much, Michelle, as well. You guys are so nice to me. You say all the, all the right things. <laughs> so I am... See, now I can find all the clears. Here's all the clears, not the whites, of course. Oh, and look, another clear. <laughs> Isn't that the way? I've got silver. I've got, I've got all the colours, but the one I want, oh, clear. Does this happen to anyone else when they go to get something and then they have every single colour except the one they actually want? 
because that's making me feel I've got silver, I've got gold, I've got copper, I've got all the colours. I've got black, all the colours. The only one that, of course, right now is eluding me. Oh, look, another black. Another black. <laughs> and I have, I have, um, I even have, I have shimmer white, but that's not the one I want. That is not what I want. Oh, look Ta -da! white <laughs> it was in the wrong drawer it was in the drawer below isn't that the way <laughs> thank you for your patience people i'm very grateful all right so what we're going to do is we're going to do like we did before we're going to pop this in our tray and this time i'm going to put white so it needs to be white. I couldn't use clear. Clear would not work. Well, not the way I want it to. You would get a you would get an interesting result with the clear, but it wouldn't work as well. All right, so I'm just dumping the whole tub on there. And I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to grab onto that corner and tap it off. And just going to grab, put that corner back in. The one I just grabbed. There we go. Look at that. Looks pretty good. I Should I have used my embossing buddy? Of course I should. Yes. But am I going to? Oh, well. It's not the end of the world if you forget. All right. So I thought this would be a nice background for the um, adorable owl. Whoops. That lid does not go there. That lid goes here. Gosh, anyone would think I'm tired or something. Am I? No, not really. I'm okay. I got a reasonable sleep last night and didn't have to get up early this morning, which was lovely. But I am up early tomorrow. All right. So here we go. We're going to heat emboss this. And this time we're heat embossing white. And you will notice it's quite different. Okay. So let me just pick that up, put my fingers under it, and I'm just going to heat this. <laughs> he is sounding excited, Saul Vega. No, Shri, I didn't use it earlier. I only used the clear. Yes, copper and black jean is always stunning. It's one. It's one of my absolute favourite. Um, I love black and copper together. I just think they're so so beautiful. It's about to start. Now, when white is cooked, it just goes whiter. It can be hard to see, especially at night time when it's cooked, but you will notice if you hold it in the light in a particular way that it's going shiny, it's a little harder to see. The easiest ones to see are the metallics. So when gold or silver or copper are cooking or when they're cooked, you can tell straight away. But when white or clear are cooked, it can be a little harder to see and it's especially so at night time now i hope you can see that that is going whiter and if i'm able to hold it just so in the light you might be able to see a bit of shine on it as well oh you guys have been playing susan's game <laughs> <laughs> thanks michelle i'll tell her that i'll be talking to her tomorrow she's asleep right now but i'll tell her that tomorrow she'll find that very funny <laughs> so susan's game for anyone who doesn't know well, we're talking about susan campfield susan is my Stampin BFF, but also my accountability buddy. So we work really closely together. We help each other with different aspects of our business and we talk every day, pretty much. And she plays a game on her live videos that you guys might enjoy. It doesn't have to be with alcohol. Can I just say that? But every time she can't find something, when she says, found it, everybody has to take a drink. She didn't start that. But somebody else did 
In fact, it might be someone that watches my videos as well, I think. <laughs> it might be Janine. I'm not sure. All right, so this is almost done. It's looking rather good. And so this time we have white on black. All right, so we have white on black. Let's look at what we already had before. We've got white dots. We've got the colored dots. And now we have white dots on a black background. All right, so can you see that these are cooked? When I run my fingers over it, there's no powder anymore. It's actually cooked. It's solid and it's not moving at all. So this is an alternate way to the way that we just did it, and it works really well. And it might be something something I've done quite a bit with embossing. Um, I'm going to start, because we've got the, the blue up this end, I'm going to start with my blends. Now, blends are alcohol markers. It takes a little bit of time to do this, but we can talk and colour at the same time. So blends, because they are alcohol markers, will colour any surface, any surface at all. They colour plastic, they'll colour metal, they'll colour whatever, okay? That means they also colour embossing. So if you're embossing on white on a dark background, doesn't have to be black, it can be any colour you like, you can then colour in your blend, your colour in your dots. Now, can I make a suggestion? For this many dots, this is going to probably make the end of my um, my marker potentially could um, damage it. So I'm actually going to use the, the skinny end because I'll still get the same effect. No one will know the difference. And I'm just colouring those in and I won't damage this smaller end. Can you see how nice this looks? So you can actually do this, like you could em emboss a flower and make your flower, you know, different colours. Colour the leaves green, colour the, you know, the centre of the flower a particular colour and then maybe change or fade out the colours to a different colour on the, on the end of the petals. You can really get creative with colouring embossing on a dark background. And it's a really, really, once again, quite forgiving because if I go outside the lines, nobody would know all right so you can see it's giving me a similar effect yep Cherie's explaining Susan's drinking game as well so and she's been doing that for a while now she didn't start out doing that it's something that kind of evolved over time this this is the lighter the lighter um, Bermuda Bay marker all right, so then from there, I'm going to go with my dark daffodil and we're going to color those. So you can see how how easily easy this comes together and it's very easy to do. And that's something, you know, fairly mindless too. So, you know, you could, um, it takes a bit more time than the sponging, but it certainly is going to give you a very similar effect. And I'm not going to make you sit through me doing every single one of these. We didn't do any cut and embossing tonight. Did you notice that? And that's the first time I haven't done cut and embossing on one of these videos for a long time. But I'm still going to tell you about our awesome joining special right now. Because we have the cutest thing ever, which is the mini cut and emboss machine. For some of you, you might have seen it. We have it in a bright blue. This blue is called Boho Blue. Okay. This colour is only available in our mini cut and emboss machine. It's limited edition. It's only available until the end of this month. So if you've been eyeing it off and thinking, well, I think that might be a fun thing I might like to do, um, you'll need to reach out to your demonstrator or me if you don't have one and, um, and say, hey, I'd like some more information about that because if you run out of time, you might be sad that you missed that really fantastic deal. For $210, you get one of those machines, which is normally worth $110, plus $315 worth of products of your choice. It is a, such a good deal. So, 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 so good. So you'll see down the other end, I'm going to be having my polished pink, which is like a candy pink, this color. This is, um, polished pink is one of the colours that is going in this year's retiring in colours. Unless they decide to keep it on as a core colour, but at the moment, as far as I know, it's going. All right, can you see how that works? 
So I'm not going to sit here and do all of them tonight, but I want to show you. This is three completely. Well, we were going to do two, but we ended up with three. And I'm wondering, do you have a favourite? <laughs> yes, I know. If they were drinking alcohol anyway, Kelly, that's true. I sometimes worry, worry about that. Ah. <laughs> I just think that this is such an easy thing to do. I like this um, blends technique on other colours other than black as well. So I've done it before. In fact, I did a video a couple of months ago um, for one of the hops that I'm in and, uh, and I did this technique, but it was with some uh, floral stamps. So... If anyone saw that, that might be familiar to you. Oh, yes, it hasn't been buffed up. Hasn't been. Neither have neither of these two have been buffed up. And it does look much better when it is. But I realized I didn't bring in I didn't bring in a um, paper towel to buff it. And I don't really want to run out to the kitchen. And I don't seem to have any. I don't see I might have. I'll tell you what I might have. Let me see if I have. I know what I have. One second. No, I only have um, baby wipes and I'm worried they'd be too wet. They might be too wet. But we could buff it up and see what we want to do with it. I was thinking this would be a really, really cute background to put our adorable owls on. So, you know, we could have our owl sitting, maybe the, the party hat one and do his hat in the three colours. So that would really be rather cute, don't you think? Let's, let's quickly stamp him. I find block D is the best size for these owls. The owls, by the way, are a, um, a gift with purchase at the moment. That one also only goes through until the end of this month. So if you're spending $90, this is a set that you can have for free. I don't want to use my, paper, my uh, baby wipe on here because I'm worried it's going to be too wet. But, yeah see it also will take off the the black so i don't want to do that i'll wait until i have a dry cloth and i'll do that at the end all right let me quickly i've got a bit of i stamp this with memento ink and i just want to show you to give you an idea of how this will look so i would do my owl with um probably color him in gray because i do rather like the owls done in gray and then i would use my Use my um, my blends. I'm using the fine end, and I'm going to do the colours of the hat to match the colours that are in my that are in my paper. Do this one here because I want the background to kind of match in with my my cute little owl. So then when I cut him out, I'll, I'll cut him out and I'll have him on a circle and I'll have some colour, probably the yellow, coming out from behind. In fact, I'm going to commit to that. You could also, if you didn't want to take away from your background at all, you could also have a vellum circle. Oh, for anyone who's watching, next Saturday we have our craft along, our monthly craft along. I'm very excited about it because... Um, it's going to it's going to be a um, vellum technique. So we're doing a technique class. And as you guys know, I love my techniques. So when I've cut him out, he's going to go on here. Do you guys have, um, I'm just looking at the time. It's 8.30 now. Is anybody, oh, the cat is listening to Cookie. Well, good thing that Cookie can't see him. <laughs> No, I don't have a duster rag or a tissue. I know, right? Because it would look make a difference to how it looks. I mean, I could go and get one, but it might take me 30 seconds. I'm going to cut this guy out because I want to give you guys a bit of an idea of how this is going to look. Um, 
do you have time for me to color him in or would you like me to color him in and post the photos of the finished cards so that you guys can go and go and do whatever it is you like to do on a Sunday night what do you like to do on a Sunday night what do people do they watch tv do they well obviously they watch me but after after this is over what do you all do I am cutting. You notice that there is no dies to cut this. The other thing is just a little note that I find it easier to colour before I cut, but in this case I'm cutting first just because I want to get you guys, I want to try and I'm sort of rushing this along a little bit so that um, you cry <laughs> when I'm finished, really. Oh, that makes me sad. So were you here when I said there's a possibility that I may be going to change my nights? Now I might, I might not. If everybody is happy with Friday and Sunday nights and want to keep, wants to keep them, but if there is another night that you prefer, I'm going to do a poll on my VIP group. So if you're in my VIP group, um, look out for that. Um, that'll be up over the next week or so. And I'm sure you don't really cry. I'm sure you don't. You'd like to see the card buffed, right? So you don't mind. So here I am rushing because I'm not wanting anyone to, um, to, you know, be held up. All right. I'm going to take my time then. I'm going to cut. I'm going to, sorry. I'm going to color. Now this is my smoky slate. I'm using the dark color here in sort of like the shadow areas like in underneath his chin here and then I'm going to use the rest of the I'm going to color the rest of his body with the lighter gray I go quiet when I cut and quiet when I color so I'm sorry about that because you're getting both tonight <laughs> anybody else do that do you go quiet when you're colouring? You know what everybody does. Who am I kidding? It's not just just not just me, it's everyone. Because when I run classes, they're really quiet when I've got people colouring. So this this colour is smoky slate, which is a good colour for owls, I find. And I think we'll need to give our owl yellow eyes because I think owls should have yellow eyes. I'm using the skinny end because it's quite a small area and I it's easier to stay inside the lines with the skinny end and I'm going to go yellow eyes here now because I'm coloring I haven't been looking at my screen very much so I hope that Oh, I'm so sorry, Michelle. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can be part of everything else though, right? Now I'm actually going to colour his face in a lighter yellow. So that would be so saffron. So we've got the dark and the light so saffron. I'm actually going to go with the light. It's, it is good, nice light colour for other parts of the owl. Right. Right, and I think just to finish this off, I'm going to use maybe pale papaya. Yeah, pale papaya for the um, for the feet, for his feet, because it's kind of a light orangey colour, and also for his beak. There we go. All right, so now he's going to go quite nicely on... I'm going to grab some dimensionals. I'm just going to pop them here. 
one and two. Just like that. And I think he's going to look nice right about there. I'm going to grab some um, basic white thick cardstock for my card base. So you ended up with a bonus background tonight because I started out doing the wrong thing, <laughs> but that's okay. And I'm wondering, because this does need to be buffed, so everyone has said they would like me to um, to buff this, so I'm going to quickly grab it and be popping right back. So I don't know if you guys want to all just chat or sing a song or something. I'll be right back. You can listen to Cookie. Okay, here we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? At least I didn't have to look for that. I knew where it was. Don't forget to buff. So, I like both of these. This one is a little lighter and brighter, being, um, and I think, can you see how, because some of the white comes through. So, it's a lighter background. I am going to buff this up, though, and I hope you can see the difference. See how some of the colour comes off? And it gets a, the contrast. Oops, move that out of the way. The contrast is better when you get all the ink off the dots. I hope you can see that's much cleaner now. And then this one, I'm just going to. Oh, cats are at the door. <laughs> they want back in now. Right, so that one's all cleaned up and this one doesn't need to be cleaned up because there's no ink anywhere except what we actually put onto the dots so there's nothing to buff here so this one I'm going to use later for something else my question to you guys is which way are we going to go are we going to go with this on a black background or are we going to go with it on the light background which one do we prefer buff de buff says Kelly it does make a big difference. <laughs> la, 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 la. Yep. Okay, black background says Cherie. And, yep, okay. So the background here is going to be like this. I'm going to pop this here. It's going to go straight onto my... And you could use seal or you could use Tombow or whatever you happen whatever you happen to pick up first. So in this case, I'm going to use my seal. Now, I did say to someone the other day I would try and use seal as an example because they were saying that they had gone through a ton of this stuff trying to work it out. When you use it, okay, first of all, feel first to make sure it's sticky before you start. Okay, start with it low to the paper. I'm trying to move this over so you can see better. Okay, and then when you get to the end, lift it. Okay, what that does is when you lift it, it separates it so it comes straight off. All right, so it's clean. I'm going to do the same thing again. Low, all the way down, lift. And you can flick it off if you want to. That also helps it separate clean. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you don't do this. Okay, you're going to start low. You're going fine, but then I forgot to... I forgot to lift it and I just took it off and what happens is you get like it's almost like spaghetti and now this is not sticky here anymore okay I put my finger here there's no stick and so when I start again it's not going to work very well <laughs> of course it is working just fine for me right now but I find that by lifting at the end you will get a better result You haven't ordered anything out of the new mini you know what at this point michelle maybe you should unless there's something you really 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 love 
really, really want, then um, maybe you're better off waiting. We have a new annual catalogue coming soon. So, all right. So I'm thinking it needs something else to ground it. I mean, we are going to need a, we're going to need a sentiment. I like how his hat matches in with the colours. And I'm just looking for a little... I usually have a um, like a little a banner. Oh, what's this one? There we go. That's from the Queen Bee set. This one, the Queen Bee dies. And that works actually. That one is really rather nice. All right. So let me. I'm going to grab this, and I'm thinking. I could use, I could do the Bermuda Bay ink for my sentiment or I could do polished pink. Those two are dark enough. Do we want pink or do we want Bermuda Bay? I'm thinking Bermuda Bay because it's up the top here and so that'll add some balance to down here. <laughs> All right, so let's grab, because we've got those right here on the desk. And I'm going to go to my adorable owls. And we've got three little sayings. We've got my friend. We've got it's your day, which I think it's your day works well because of the hat. So it makes it more of a birthday card. So let's go with it's your day. The only thing is I have a funny feeling that this one might be a little bit crooked on my, might not have put the sticker on quite straight. So I'm going to add, this is block B. And I'm going to go with my Bermuda Bay. When you when you ink up a stamp, check it before. Now I want you to show. I want to show you. Can you see? I've got extra ink right here. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that. You could use a paper towel, which of course you all know I have paper towel right here. I could do that, or I could just use it my finger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my grid paper. And I'm going to line up the stamp on the grid paper and make sure that it is actually straight. And can you see it is ever so slightly crooked? The day is up a little bit. So I want to actually, when I stamp it, I want to move that down slightly so that it will line up better. So I always, I always start by stamping on my grid paper, or usually, if I remember because then I get a nice, I get a straight result. I'm pretty happy with that. That's all right. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab some, I'm going to close my ink pad, Jody, and then I'm going to grab my dimensionals. I've usually put three behind a circle and I don't have them too close to the edge so that I can slide things under if I want to or put things over the top if I want to and then we've got our little owl there he's looking very cute and then I'm deciding do I have this over the top or underneath I think over the top I think that might be the right thing to do all right so I'm going to put a dimensional here on this end and then I'm going to have a bit of snail here on this end because this end is already going to be propped up by this circle And you know what I didn't do? I didn't take the back off my dimensional. So it's not going to stick to anything if I don't do that. Mm. There we go. It's kind of cute, but needs bling, definitely. And I think maybe it's also not in... <laughs> on your birthday. Oh, it must be beginning of March, is it, Michelle? Yes, we do have some new... Things. Mind you, they're available to demonstrators right now, but um, but we do have some new things. Now, um, we have, as part of those new things, we have some gorgeous paper. I did a card with it on Friday night. In fact, it's right here, this one. This is with that new paper that Michelle's talking about that's coming out next month. Um, but if you're a demonstrator, you can actually get this paper right now. So, um, you know, it's up to you, but I really like, I really like getting my paper early. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe we need some, some ribbon for this. 
and definitely some bling. And I'm going to get some polished pink ribbon because obviously this is going to be a really good match. So I'm going to tie my bow. And let's get that. I've been watching this show called Alaska Daily and I am as far with it as I could possibly go because it's a series. And then for whatever reason, they've had a longer, they've, they've stopped it like halfway through the series at a really crucial point. And they aren't bringing it back until I think next week or something. And I was like, really? Come on, guys. Get it together. Anyone else watching Alaska Daily? It's really good. Thoroughly recommend it. I'm liking it a lot. And does anyone watch reality TV or am I the only, um, the only tragic? Although I know Ellen and I both watch it. So um, we're watching Survivor, Australian Survivor at the moment. It's escapist and it's just lots of fun. I really enjoy it. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe that's just me, but I really like Survivor. So that's on right now. But I have to watch the replays. All right, so now we need some bling. And I'm thinking some iridescent rhinestones. What do you think, guys? I think maybe that would be the best. So I'm going to do a big one here. We do a medium sized one here. And then maybe a little guy right here. There we go. Some googly eyes would also be a possibility for this card. Oh, yes. I saw that 1923 is coming out for Yellowstone fans. <laughs> oh, good, Carol. You're watching Alaska Daily too. It's really good. Hilary Swank is very, very good in it. She's an amazing actress, I think. So there you go. All right. So how did we go? We did make it. We actually did finish a card, and I've got a couple of backgrounds. This one I need to finish, and this one's ready to go, and I'm going to do something fun with that too. So look out for that coming over the next few days. So we've got some some fun backgrounds going on there. This one I'm going to. Will I color all the dots, or maybe I'll leave some white? That might look. That might be fun too. But totally different ways of getting a similar effect. You wouldn't know that those are totally different techniques <laughs> thanks Jody. <laughs> I think we're all hoots around here oh that's good I hope that you I hope that everyone learns something tonight um, and you know if this is if you love techniques then stick with me because I love techniques too um, next Saturday afternoon for craft along we are doing vellum techniques and I'm looking forward to sharing a really fun card with you if you ordered with me last month and you placed an order that was $60 or more, then your supplies for the card that we're making next weekend will be arriving in your mailbox this week. So look out for that. Um, if you have placed an order this month, February, then you'll be getting a supply pack from me next month um, for the March craft along. So um, if, if you have not yet ordered, but you'd like to be part of that, you just need to place your order before the 28th of February, which is the last day to place orders for next month's craft along. So there we go. All right. Well, I hope you all have fun tonight. Um, I had a lot of fun with these techniques, even though I did lose my white embossing powder there for a while and I couldn't find my um, my soft cloth to do. In, but we got there in the end, hey? We, we got there and we did actually complete a card. Um, and the others, I'm going to use them for backgrounds over the, the coming week or so. So I hope you have a great week, guys, and all the very best. Stay safe and stay well. Um, team members, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10. See you soon. Bye-bye, everyone.